I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Latin America. Today, we're in our apartment here in Argentina. We just got into Buenos Aires last night, and we are just wrapping up our first full day here in the city. So Dominic and I are going to sit down and take you through first a little tour of the apartment so you can see what our Airbnb is like and talk about getting into Buenos Aires, our trip to get here, and what our first impressions are like of the country of Argentina. This is both of our first times here. So I think you're going to enjoy this. We're going to get to that right after the bump. All right, so we're here at our apartment in the Barrio Palermo in the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina. We're gonna kick off, before we start talking about our first day of first impressions here of Argentina, we want to show the apartment that we are staying in. We have an Airbnb on our second day. Someone asked the question, why would we get a hotel on our first day? I think we can answer that when we get back. But I want to walk you through and just show you what this Airbnb is like. It's a studio. It's just my wife and I. So we just have this little space here in the heart of the classic part of the city. So let's take you right to that before we get on with the uh, discussion. All right, we're going to give you guys a tour of our apartment here in Buenos Aires. Now, we're not going to be moving around, so we just have the one apartment, and this is just $25 a night from Airbnb. So this is a studio. It's not big, but we got a nice little dining spot, cute little kitchen. All right, and this window opens up there. This is Argentina, so you want fresh air a lot of the time. You don't need... Oh, and there's a washer behind. So we're going to point that out right, right there, so you can do laundry right here in the room. This is the entrance that Dominic is in front of. We have closets here that we're, we might as well show you now. Lots of closet space for a studio. You can really fit in. We're gonna be here for two weeks, so we'll probably expand into them, make use of the space. Both sides got drawers. We have, yeah, we got a hanging space there. And uh, so we have couch here. Looks comfy, haven't actually sat in it. Nice bed, well done. Little TV. We got a beautiful balcony out here. We're in Palermo. So we got some outdoor seating. I have coffee out here. So you can, uh, the microphone's on me, but there's a lot of sound of birds here. This is Buenos Aires, so it's very outdoorsy. We're very bright. I gotta check the time. It is four o'clock in the afternoon. So the sun's getting low. All right, we're gonna head in. I'll show you the bathroom which is much larger than I would expect in an apartment of this size. As you guys know, I love doing Airbnbs when I'm traveling around. Here I am, because it lets you see what life could be like as a local. So check this out. So bidets everywhere. So far, we found those universally, which is really, really nice. That's something we rarely get in Central America. They exist, but they are rare. Okay, and I want to show you just real quick while we're doing this. In the hotel, you're going to get more adapters typically, but this is the standard type I power outlet here. So be aware, this is Australian, Chinese, and Argentina and New Zealand are the only major company uh, countries that use this type of adapter. Sometimes you'll find the European type uh, A, I believe it is. No, that can't be right. Type C, uh, but this type I is the more common here. They're on 220 power with 50 hertz, and it uses the type I most of the time. So you need to make sure that your equipment will use that and that you have an adapter for it that is not a common adapter, so you really have to be prepared. All right, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. I love being able to show the Airbnb apartments. I think it really gives a good feeling of like what it could be like, both for those who are looking to be tourists here, $25 a night. This is a great kind of option for staying in the city. But for those who are looking at a longer term thing, this gives you an idea. At Airbnb rates with no discount, that's only $7.50 a month. If this is something you were working out monthly rates on, of course, you could be lower. And if you were looking at moving into the city and renting a place like this on your own, not as an Airbnb, obviously a lot lower uh, and you do your own furnishing and stuff. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of what living in Palermo could potentially be like if you were looking at this from a relocation perspective. Um, so we came in last night and uh, it's both of our first times here in Argentina. It's Dominica's first time in South America. Yep. Uh, we had an opportunity to go to uh, the hotel. We stayed at the 
uh, Curio Collection by Hilton, which was uh, near the port uh, in the neighborhood of San Telmo. Uh, and that was one of the like like old city buildings. The, the Curio Collection are not traditional modern hotels. They're older buildings that are converted to more or less chain standards. Uh, so it's, it's more eclectic and a little bit more part of Argentina. Uh, but uh, uh, we like being in hotels our first night, which we'll go into. Uh, but we managed to go out for dinner. We've been out for breakfast and coffee and been around the city and did a little bit of shopping today. Moved around a little bit and uh, got to experience the first little bit of like just culture shock of getting into Buenos Aires. So what do you think of uh, Argentina and Buenos Aires so far? Um, it reminds me of Europe quite a bit. Actually, it feels a lot more like Europe than it does any part of Latin America that I've been in. Of course, it is my first time in South America, so I don't really have anything to compare it to here. Right. I would say that I got a little bit of that feeling when I was in Bolivia as well. Bolivia feels more European than Central American Central America does, um, but uh, I, this more European than that for sure. So first thing I want to mention, because we'll easily forget it, is that the power plugs were not what we were expecting. No, I thought they were going to be European plugs. I had looked it up and that's kind of what the general answer was, is that it'll be 220 volts and it'll be like European plugs. European okay. plug is a type C. That's the two just round holes. Yeah. And it is not that. No, <laughs> uh, they are officially, those are available here, uh, but we have not seen one. What we see everywhere is called the Type I, which is the Australia, New Zealand, and most of China plug. Um, so it's it's two slants and a straight. It's a very odd design you, you never see anywhere. And Argentina is one of only four large countries in the world that uses it. Yes, I was surprised. Now it is 220 and 50 hertz. So be aware uh, if you're coming here that, that you need to have a physical adapter so you can use those plugs, but make sure that any electronics you're bringing can handle 220 and 50. And if you're going to be doing anything like filming, you're on a GoPro, a camera of any sort. And I know someone who films all the time and had no idea that this was a thing. Even as a full-time traveler, he had no idea. You would see flickers from electronics in the background. Now we don't have any here, so it doesn't matter. But if you were to have light bulbs or TVs in the background, a lot of times you're going to have this flickering look and you'll wonder why you get that in Argentina or Bolivia or China, but you don't get it when you're in the United States. And that's because cameras are set to flicker control at a specific speed. So if you're gonna be in one of these countries, just set it to 50 Hertz. And if you're going to be back in North America, set it to 60 Hertz and now they, it, it times its shutter so that that doesn't happen in the background. It's just one of those little things you have to be aware of. So, but most electronics can handle the 50, 60 thing. It's, it's AC motors that are the biggest problem. The razors, uh, like shavers, hair dryers, those kinds of things. Yeah, so I had bought a dual voltage hair dryer because I knew that the voltage was going to change. It was just the plug that I was surprised about. Yep. So, so that's something to just be very aware of because it really does catch you by surprise. And on your first day, that could be a big hassle. Uh, now, luckily, the hotel we stayed in, they had one wall port that was a built in adapter that had like it accepted everything. So, being able like, because we have iPhones, they just plug in, and, and pretty much every phone will, but check it before you plug it in. Um, so we were able to charge those devices, and we have one universal adapter with us that could handle that as well. But you just, things you need to be prepared for in this day and age, often people forget those, because it's not very often that you encounter a new adapter. Yes, and my hair dryer came with a European adapter, and I was like, oh, great, this will be fine, we'll have an extra one. Right, and I had been you know. in Bolivia not that long ago, and it never occurred to me that Argentina would be different than Bolivia. Yeah. They, they're bordering countries, like, they're very close. Uh, so that was so our first night in the hotel. Um, we got in kind of late, so we already knew, right? So one, we've, we've spent a lot of time in Italy, so we're used to the idea of really late dinners. So that's not a like a culture shock for us. Uh, but that is something to be aware of. Dinner here is about 10 o'clock. But we got in pretty close to midnight, and dinner was already over. Yeah. So we went um, we went and, and uh, had dinner at a, a club really close by. Food was really good, I thought. Yep, they had veggie burgers, which is always nice to see. Yeah, lots of everywhere we've we've been. Like I've I've been out walking the streets. I've already done some filming, and there's vegetarian everywhere. Like restaurants offer vegetarian, and there's vegetarian restaurants quite a bit, which is very nice because we're used to very little selection in in Nicaragua. 
Yes. Uh, this morning, um, we hit some cafes, cafe culture here, very big. That was, that was really nice. We're cafe people. Our kids are cafe people. They're not with us, but they would really enjoy. I mean, there's cafes everywhere. So people ask the question, right? Does it feel like Europe, European architecture all over the place? The way that the city like behaves is laid out. The way that people are all feels very European. Um, yeah, and I would say the, the style of dressing, too, if only because it's cold here right now. Right, right. <laughs> we're, like, we're kind of bundled up. I've got my Canadian Junior League hockey jacket on. <laughs> this is secondhand from Nicaragua. It's the only things you can get. Uh, very hard to find jackets. I'm enjoying as we're doing this. I'm watching people on their balconies all over. So this is a major city. So people have balconies. Like, we're sitting out on the balcony. People are watching us, I've noticed. Uh, but there's a lot of life outside. Like people really are out on their balconies, just having coffee or whatever. Kids are playing on balconies. Um, people are going to restaurants and sitting outside, even in the cold weather. Uh, the coffee shops are nice because in, in Nicaragua, coffee shops generally are inward facing. You sit in an inclusive area and here everything's about windows or sitting outside because there's people on the street to watch. Yeah, I was enjoying the people watching and and I always um, read what to pack or what to wear at whatever location that we're going to because I don't like sticking out um, clothing wise as a tourist if I can help it. And so I always double check because sometimes I find them very outdated. <laughs> the recommendations, yeah. especially for like Nicaragua. Um, Nobody has put out what to wear in Nicaragua or what's acceptable since like 2017. That was a while ago. So right, a lot has changed in Nicaragua since 2017. A lot of a lot of significant cultural changes have occurred during that time. Uh, a few things I want to point out. One is I'm looking at a Lidl bag from where we're sitting. So Lidl is a really major German grocery chain. When we're in Europe, we have a tendency to to shop there a lot. It's a lot like Aldi in the United States, if you're familiar. Um, but so in the, is it European here? Yeah, there's European grocery store chains and we've seen a number of Carrefour's, which is the Belgian like uh, mini mart chain. Very, very popular mini marts all throughout Europe. They do have some supermarkets too, but here I have so far only seen mini marts, but those are the mini marts we're seeing along with the local, like just little standalone local places. Um, but that's so very much a selection of European products here as well, like direct and cars. So many Citroen, uh, Peugeot, Renault, Volkswagen, like it's it's a <laughs> very Euro European supply chain. Mm -hmm. And of course we're on the East Coast, right? We're, we're on the Atlantic. So direct shipments from Europe, very easy compared to Chile, which is getting direct from China very easily. But that is a factor. Um, we went out for, we went to a wine bar that's very European. Uh, just everything. I think. I think it's so. It's a beautiful city. I did a bit of walking around. I did three and a half miles this morning, which is pretty typical when I'm doing a video. That's about my length, uh, where I feel like a video makes sense. In this case, I was racing back because we had to check out of the apartment, but uh, of no, the the motel, yeah, and uh, uh, beautiful parks. Lots and lots of city parks. They feel you very European, lots of like, it, it's the little touches. It's hard to explain what makes things feel European. And I hate using that as a comparison. Like this city is European. Well, this city is Latin America, right? Like this is a, what is Latin America like? It's like this, because it is Latin America. But um, it's, it's the way that signs are written. It's the fonts that are used. It's the attention to detail in the design of everyday everything. It has a Europeanness about it. I don't know quite how to how to put that, but it's Europe has a tendency towards a lot of care in the little things, but also an embracing of things that are older or antiquated or antique in a way that Americans and North Americans don't tend to. If that makes sense, like I'm looking at some rooftops here. And just, it's occurring to me that like, in the United States, these rooftops would be seen as old fashioned, but they're very well kept and very well kept. And it's it's attractive and inviting 
but in an old worldish kind of way. And a lot of the city is quite old. This is one of the older built up large metros in Latin America. Um, obviously, Lima, Bogota, Panama City have, have a, many years on them from a, from a large city perspective, but this is a very old feeling city. You, you don't have the feeling that like the city just popped up. I'm still pretty tired yeah. <laughs> from two days of travel. It was, uh, it was an exhausting trip. So we did, um, and I've covered all of this in the video uh, that I've done uh, for, for the tour of the port, but uh, we did a bus from Nicaragua to Costa Rica, which takes basically a full day. Um, you have enough time to like go out to dinner. You can do a little bit, but you can't like do things in Costa Rica. But but it, it, so it's not rushed. It's comfortable from a time perspective if you do it over two days. In theory, you could catch a flight the same day if you did the bus, got dropped at the airport, which we did. We got there about six six thirty, which is a long day. But if you had a flight at say ten or eleven, you'd be pushing it. If anything went wrong on that bus ride. You would miss the flight, obviously. And the that, first that time we happen. took that bus, we didn't we didn't get in until more like eight o'clock. And the first time Paul took that bus, he didn't get in until almost eleven because right. of road construction in Costa Rica. Right. So I I personally it would, be would very never risky. risk that, especially right. with the kids with us. I would never ever do that. I've done it twice that it got in at six six thirty, and once that it did around eight. But who knows what the frequency is, what the chances are. It, it would be pushing it. In theory, you could you could give it a try, but it would be very tough. You'd be very, very tired. Uh, but doing it, getting a hotel is, is quite comfortable. And then we got up early in the morning and flew all day. So that was, we, we left the hotel. We were on the shuttle at about six and we arrived here in, in the city at our hotel at essentially midnight. That was an 18 hour travel day, basically. Well it is three minus hours three hours yeah, so 15 hours yeah so um overall i think i like buenos aires a lot uh it's cold but not actually as cold as i was like mentally preparing for so that part's good people have said it's a little bit on the warm side for the for the time of year so so oh, okay. that's good for like just a few degrees living in nicaragua it's cold yeah our range today i think was between 11 and 17 degrees celsius and this week the full swing over the course of the week is supposed to be from a low of, did I say seven? To a high of 19 throughout the week, all Celsius. So you can, you can check those in Fahrenheit if you need, but that gives you an idea of what, what the nighttime to daytime temperatures are over the week period. Uh, so it's, it's not a huge swing. It's not super cold, but it's chilly. Definitely not very warm at any point, but it's nice for being outside. Like you wear a jacket, you wear jeans, you know, you can, you can put on a hat. A lot of people have scarves. Like they're prepared for it and people sit outside and they just, because the, the weather doesn't vary that much, people really do embrace the outdoors. Food is very European. There's a lot of care in all the food, lots of like variety everywhere you go. There's like little different flavor, different, different approach to things. Live music last night, that was very like jazz club lounge kind of. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have just stumbled on the only place nearby to have dinner, happened to have live music. So we only caught Three songs, but three songs, but it was a nice atmosphere. It was really nice. It was not too loud, so that you were able to actually go and enjoy it. True, yes. It was a type of music that I really enjoy going to see live. Like, like a little bit more, it felt like their own music. I don't know. So like, it didn't feel like, like they were just playing covers. They may have been, but not, not obvious covers. Um, very, very loungy, very expressive. Um, it, it felt meaningful to go out and watch. And uh, when they weren't playing, um, I like the, the culture here. It's like, it's like deep discussions. Like any table you saw, it was people like deep in conversation. Uh, it's a very intellectual city. Like it's known for its literary and, and you know, discourse uh, communities and so, and art. Um, and you, you feel that, I think very much on the street. There's galleries and antique shops and bookstores and cafes and meeting places and, and like just everywhere. I haven't been out that much. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm very tired and I knew that today was going to be pretty much just a recovery day for yeah. me 
you know, 12 hours on the bus, 15 hours dealing in total, dealing with the plane travel, like I'm tired. Yeah, we did do some logistics. We did manage to get to a pharmacy. I had left behind some of my um, um, antibiotics uh, because I I have bronchitis. So for those who people are watching the show and you're getting the episodes out of order, I'm now on like day five of the treatment. So like six or seven days of having bronchitis uh, at the time that we're recording this. Uh, so I've been taking amoxicillin plus some additional, I don't know what it is. Uh, and um, hopefully I'm getting better. Um, but so we had to stop and, and get that. I didn't miss any days. I had, I had some, I just didn't have enough. So we got that. Uh, definitely more expensive than Nicaragua by quite a bit, but it wasn't wasn't bad at all. Um, we are uh, still unclear on how we're going to deal with cash and stuff like that, so we'll be updating you as we figured that out. Money here in in Argentina is definitely the biggest problem uh, for a travel for anyone pretty much, but for travelers it's especially difficult. So generally, you want to bring U.S. cash, but you need to exchange it. We have not figured that out yet. Don't just come and exchange. Never, ever, ever. The worst thing anywhere I've ever known is to go exchange at like the airport or something. Never do that in Nicaragua, never do that in Argentina. It's the one thing that everyone always thinks you're supposed to do and it's like the last thing you should do, uh, at least of places I know. But here uh, in Nicaragua, it's easy. You find the street exchangers, but you don't need to exchange in Nicaragua because it's, it's a dual currency country unless you're coming with like euros. Here they only use the Argentinian peso and you need to get it uh, to be able to do a lot of things. A lot of places only take cash or they'll say they take debit card, but they mean local debit cards, I'm told. Foreign debit cards will show up as a credit card and it may not work. Some places actually get mad. So, you know, because they think you're lying to them because they're not aware of foreign debit cards and why they show up as credit cards, apparently. Um, a lot of places do take credit cards, but you will pay generally a credit card fee and you will pay at a higher exchange rate. So it's okay when you have to, but you want to limit that unless you just don't care about the money. So we're, we've been paying on credit card um, and it's still not that expensive. Argentina is very affordable. So our first meal, we had two giant burgers and fries uh, and a beer. That was about uh, 32 after tax tip and all that. Um, our uh, uh, lunch was extremely expensive, I felt, but we had really good coffee you had a canolo, and I had a really, really large salad with grilled trout. That was quite good. That was a really nice place, uh, and that was twenty-five after everything. These are the these are the what I actually had taken out of the account uh, according to American Express. So we're quite accurate. Um, and then we went out to a wine bar. I got a glass of wine. You did not. Uh, you got potato broccoli croquettes. I got fried brie, which is quite good. Um, and it came with a bunch of bread and, and bread dip as well. Uh, and wine was two, it was a tapas place, basically a wine and tapas bar. Uh, and that came to, I, I think- I did get a hot tea. Oh, and a hot tea, that's right. And all of that came to only $21. So I felt that that was more, more uh, a good price. But all that's with a bad exchange rate. So any one of those in theory, I don't know what the difference in exchange rate is, but it's like as at least 20% better um, and maybe more. So if you were going to be living here, you were going to have adjusted to uh, the dollar blue, you're getting a good exchange, you're, you're on the peso, paying with cash. In theory, you could get somewhere between 20 and 30% less on all those prices at the same places doing the same thing. So that's important to know when you're first arriving you're just going to be stuck dealing with credit cards unless somehow you have access to pesos uh, and you're going to want to figure out how to get pesos right away. Yeah, and I've read like travel logs where people said that, for example, their Airbnb host helped them exchange money. Um, I didn't ask our Airbnb host about that because we have friends here, so we were hoping that they were they can help us with that. They've not had time to do that yet, so we're still dealing yeah, with we're, credit cards. We're hoping uh, tomorrow night that we'll be able to get that that dealt with. We're here for two weeks, so two days on credit cards is not the not the end of the world. Uh, and some things you still want to use a credit card from time to time, so it's not terrible. Of course, our Airbnb is paid online, so that doesn't really count. Same with the, the Hilton that we stayed at, those kinds of things. Um, Uber, you pay with credit card, obviously. Like So uh, there is Uber here. That's something that people always want to know. Um, you can get it pretty much everywhere. Seems to work fine. What, what We've only used it a couple times, but no problems. 
Yep. So the question was asked, why do we use hotels or why do we recommend hotels on our first night when coming into a city? And, and really, I should preface this with exactly kind of what we mean is when you're flying in to a place you don't know and you don't have resources, it's your first time, we recommend using a hotel on the first night. So why is that? Are you actually asking that? Well, they, they asked me the question and I okay. was readjusting, so feel free to go, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing is that when you come into a country on your first night, uh, immigration asks you uh, where you're staying. And it's a lot easier to give the name of a hotel than it is to find the exact address of an Airbnb. Yep. And there are situations, rare, where, where Airbnbs could get you in a little bit of trouble because not always are they legal. Okay, that's That's true. super rare. Yeah, there's super rare, there but are it can places happen. where they're not. Legal. Right, because if they're not paying their taxes or something and you're like, well, I'm staying at this Airbnb, they could be like, oh, that's funny. That's not in our records as a registered hotel address. And then... Now, I've, I've never heard of that happening, but those are just the risks that you would be adding. Now, if you know a place is fine, like normal, like 99% of the time, at least, perfectly fine, I'm sure, far more than that. Um, but, like, we came in here the instant I knew the name of the hotel, he's just like, you're good. Like, that was, he, that was so fast, he's like, oh yeah, that place, you're good. So, um, that does make it easier. Um, sometimes there's shuttles. Yep. Some, and we recommend um, staying at an airport at an airport hotel if you get in late. Like if it's if it's midnight or later, trying to to find your way into a city and find your Airbnb in a neighborhood where maybe you have a picture of the front of the building, maybe you don't. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and hopefully it's self check in. If it's not self check in, I wouldn't even attempt it because trying to meet somebody to let you into an Airbnb in the middle of the night, and we have done that because we've done this the other way, and it is much harder, especially with kids. It's yep. much harder to find an Airbnb than just go to a hotel where there's a front desk, <laughs> like pick one with a 24 hour front desk. Right. And I, you know, the ch especially if you're at like a major hotel. Right, it's, it's, that's part of it, is that major hotel chains that you know. Um, so we use Hilton, but you know, Marriott, Hyatt, Holiday Inn slash Intercontinental, right? They all work really well. There's there's others in other countries. Um, it, one, we get points, so it minimizes it. Two, we know exactly what's going on. Three, we have an app, we can check in, we like, can let them know, we know everything is handled. And when you're first arriving, there's just so much comfort in knowing that you know you have the place. You know they're going to take care of you. There's no way they're turning you out on the street. There's no way the place wasn't real. But everybody has apartment rental stories where, oh, we got there and the place was completely uninhabitable. Yeah. They had overbooked what it. What are you going to do if it's the middle of the night? Right. So really, the after an entire, <clears throat> excuse me, an entire day of travel, um, you want easy. Yeah. Like, I was exhausted yeah. yesterday and, um, like, wasn't quite at the level of incoherence that I was the day before that, but, like, I was tired and all I wanted to do was get rid of the luggage, get something to eat and go to bed. And that is pretty much what we did. And it was easy. And we were able to just ask the guy at the front desk the closest restaurant that was still open. And he's like, oh, it's right on the corner. And it just... A lot of things are easier yep. with staying at hotels. So yes, it was a lot more expensive. Yeah. But the equivalent of four nights. Yeah, but being easy was worth it, and especially if we had had the kids with us, it would be even more so. If you have kids, right. oh my gosh. If you're a easy. backpacker, you're healthy. You can you know stay up all night if an emergency truly happens. Like, yeah. If, if you really are on the tightest budget, it's it's an okay to thing to skip. But as a as an adult traveler who can stay in hotels, prefers not to because one, we're cheap. Two, though, more importantly, is I like staying in Airbnb. I like staying in a neighborhood. So, I mean, we do, we do relocation on the show, right? We talk about life abroad, and you're not going to live in the Hilton. I mean, someone is. Some really lucky person is, is able to afford that. But normal people are looking and want to know, and I want to know when I'm in a city, what would it be like to live here? So not only do I want to be in an Airbnb, I want to be one in a neighborhood that would be within consideration. 
or nearby of something that that I or someone I know would be would be interested in staying in. So here we're in Palermo, which is one of the core like expat accessible barrios, if you will, and very popular, uh, but not the most expensive. It's not Recoleta, not not crazy, not the diplomatic zone, not the not the harbor, but a nice livable neighborhood near other things walking distance to where our friends live who you know rent an apartment here and live here in real life so like this apartment that we're in is potentially indicative of what if we were to move to argentina not with kids but if it was just us and we were just getting a little apartment for ourselves in buenos aires this place would give us a neighborhood idea we would want a little bit more space than this for just ourselves but the the building the street the block they're all uh, completely um, um, options. And so staying in an Airbnb is very exciting in that way. Um, it's much more of a cultural experience. It lets you be in the, in the neighborhoods. I'm looking, these are places that people live in. These are not all Airbnb rentals, Yeah. right? Like it's very clear that people are, are living here. Uh, so it's that, that is a lot of value, I think for, for, for my audience at least. And for people who are just traveling in that, I want to get to know a place kind of way. Hotels, I think, naturally keep you a little bit at arm's length, make you a little bit more of a tourist, a little bit less of a of a integration. Not that you're going to integrate in a week or two, but um, much more so. So when I was in Bolivia, I stayed in Airbnbs. It was very valuable. It really gave me a idea of what you could do living in Keru Keru. And really, all of the things that make a hotel easy for the first night are the things that keep you separate from a neighborhood after that. You know, just. One of the things that we like to do, and I think actually does give you a view of a place, is going to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> Which my viewers really know like I say that. that a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we really do like to do that. At some point soon, we're going to go to the market to have a few things to have here in the apartment because every bite of food that we eat does not need to be um, out to eat somewhere. And we need to have things like. Which is also a general just benefit to being in an Airbnb. You're much more able to like, have a kettle, cook a little bit, store stuff in the fridge. Yeah, like leftovers, heat up your leftover food if you if you bring them home, or you know just have things like bread for toast, milk for coffee and for tea, um, just general things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is our first day, our first uh, bit of impressions. We'll be going out for dinner at some point this evening, I assume. We have not had dinner yet, but dinner is, uh, I don't know what time it is. It must be pushing five o'clock, five hours yet for us to get hungry before standard dinner time. Yeah. That's okay. It's a bit wild now so, that I'm, but we'll be going out for the um, evening snack before dinner. Media Luna. Yeah. Well, that's now. I'm not yeah. hungry. Are we, are we seriously going out for that? <laughs> we, we might be going out for that. Okay. She seems like that's the thing we're doing. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, that was our first day. I, overall, very happy with Buenos Aires. It is incredibly interesting. Um, if you're going to be living in Latin America, um, I mean, we're going to dig into this over the next two weeks, right? So this is this is just our. So we have a, a a solid first impression to compare against in two weeks when we give you our two week impression of having been down here. Um, but uh, this this seems like an incredibly good. Uh, potential value for expats. Uh, I think this falls into a strong consideration. If it, if it, you know, if the distance from your home is okay, that's a, that's a major factor. If the cash problems currently um, are something you can deal with, if you're looking at like retirement and it's out in the future by a few years, I think the money problems will be more or less resolved within a few years. Obviously, they may not be, but uh, they, they've been going on for quite some time. This is not a sudden economic disaster. It's it's quite a bit in the making. But uh, I don't think that it's something that should hinder you if you're looking at moving. If you're looking at traveling, you want simple travel. This is not your first place to go. It's not your, oh, I've never gone anywhere before. Let's go to Argentina. Nope, we can rule that out. Quirky power. Far away. <laughs> really far. Quirky power. The money is hard. Places like El Salvador, Ecuador, Panama, Nicaragua, where the U.S. dollar is accepted, they're the easiest, even if you're coming from Europe, it's easy to deal with the US dollar. If you're coming from Canada, it's easy to deal with the US dollar. Those are your absolute easiest from that perspective. For most travel, those countries are really, really easy. 
they're good first place uh, travel locations. Argentina, definitely, I would want to not be the culture shock of those little things the first time. But if you're moving here, that's stuff you, you figure out in 48 hours. And, and oh, not a big also deal. the accent. <laughs> if you speak Spanish, <laughs> if you don't speak Spanish at all, um, the only yeah, thing that will catch you, <laughs> right, you won't notice, except that things like Duolingo and stuff will be a bit odd. Um, but uh, some, of the, some of the sounds here are dramatically different. Um, so what we call, like, over there, ahí is ashi. What we call a street, calle, and what in, in Bogota is calle, here is cache. And so that's, that takes quite a bit to hear, but that is different. And yo is show. Yes, figuring out, like, my my translator is definitely on, there's a delay. There's a delay. Yeah. There's a pause, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, that's difficult. It right makes now. Spanish a bit harder. Plus, it's a Voss country. Now, we're, we're used to that in Nicaragua. We also use Voss. There are not very many places that do. So, again, if you're used to Mexico, Guatemala, Spain, this is going to be a whole verb conjugation that you're not used to. Um, and it's written, like, they use it formally. Um, I think they actually use it more formally than Nicaragua does because I notice like government signs use the Voss tense in signage. Mm -hmm. So, and they don't say Voss, they just have the verbs. So you have to know a verb form to know what they're saying. Like when they're telling that you need to do something, you'll just see sauce, S-O-S, whatever. And that's the verb for you, but that's a verb you basically never see written in Nicaragua. You only hear it. And in most places, like Duolingo doesn't have it. So that's uh, something to, to know for sure. Uh, but, but minor, like if you're looking at moving here, those things won't affect you. If you're looking at being a tourist, um, they're just little things to be aware of. Not things that will cause problems. None of it's a big deal, right? It's very, no. very accessible country. Um, one thing that I, I do feel um, a little bit more danger on the streets, and I was warned heavily that uh, my chances of being robbed here are, are countless times higher than in Nicaragua. We're always told that the danger in Nicaragua is not violence, but theft. Uh, but, and that's kind of our thing. Oh, we have very little real crime, so we have petty crime. Like people are gonna grab your camera, people will grab your phone. Uh, but apparently here, that's something that people see constantly, not just a rumor, like it's a, it's a real thing. So uh, it is a, it's a huge city. It's, it's similar in size to a New York City, to a Mexico City, to a Sao Paulo, to a Shanghai, to uh, no, nothing similar to Tokyo, uh, but really, really big. So you get those kinds of crimes, but it's something to be aware of. Um, and, and petty crimes exist in, in Europe as well, but apparently here I'm told it's quite a bit worse and I do kind of feel it. I feel eyes on me a lot more. So that's to be aware of if that's something that you're really looking for a comfort on the street you watch my videos in Nicaragua, we lean extreme towards the safety in that, even in Managua. Uh, and here, it's fine. I wouldn't be worried about being out on the street, but um, if you're, you know, even me carrying a camera around, I'm I'm being very alert all the time. I have heard that it um, is common, like, for somebody to go by on a moto and grab your phone or grab your purse or grab your camera and they're gone before you can do anything about it because they're on right. the photo. Right, we hear that that's the thing they do in Nicaragua, but I've never heard of anyone it's actually happened to. Here, people are like, no, 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 I've seen it. They're like, okay. <laughs> so it, it's, yeah, uh, apparently a very real thing. Um, and, and people treat it like a much more real thing here. So, you know. So do things like if you are using your phone to look up a map, step into a doorway away from the street. Yep. Um, crossbody purse or a belt bag worn here very close to your body um just you know be aware yeah i've got my money incredibly inaccessible little things like things that when i'm in nicaragua i don't have to worry about those things i can just leave my money in my pocket and it's fine um here i you definitely want to be a bit more in, uh, intentionally secure yeah um but for an expat who's looking at a place to live what for a traveler is just a little bit of caution over a couple of weeks if that's something that would negatively impact you in an everyday living situation it's something to consider not a dangerous city i don't think it seems very safe beautiful parks people are out walking everywhere people are out in the parks jogging people are walking their dogs people are clearly comfortable being outside without a problem but 
Uh, it doesn't have the safety that my videos show in Nicaragua or Guatemala or Costa Rica or Bolivia. So just, and, and, and Panama would be uh, in that category as well. So uh, just, just that little bit to be aware of. The flight over Northern Argentina looked amazing. Really interested in seeing a bunch of those cities. That looks like some really interesting, I talked about this in another video, really interesting potential expat locations um, that I want to uh, check out some and bring to you guys. Other than that, Argentina is a affordable, uh, European-like Latin American experience uh, that my understanding for most viewers are, is very visa-friendly uh, to people coming in. I, I think it's quite easy uh, to be able to stay long-term, uh, more accessible than most countries uh, in the region, and most are okay, uh, but this one I, I've heard is, is quite good. I, we should know, coming in through border control was one of the easiest I've ever had. That was that was exceptionally easy, um, but the counterpoint to that was I was stopped on the street this morning by the police while filming. Four police came up to me. I had to produce documents on the street, had to explain who I was with, what flight I had came, come in on, when I had arrived, when I was leaving, what I was doing. They had to go watch my vlog, um, told me I couldn't film in public, in a public sidewalk, just walking down the street. Like absolutely different experience than I've ever had anywhere else in the world. I've never had to produce documents as a pedestrian before. Um, I've never been just grabbed and, you know, like, oh, you have to have documents. Like, um, so that you have to have documents just to be out on the street uh, is, is surprising, right? It's not a huge deal. Like, that's something you get used to. It's just the rules. But um, that, on our very first day, I was stopped by for police and question in a way I've never been questioned before um, does give me a little bit of hesitancy as to what everyday life would be like. As a tourist, I'm not worried at all. And they were friendly, they were professional, it was not scary, nothing like that. Like, I don't want to give an overly negative impression, but the fact that police stopped me for filming and I had to produce all this information while just walking on the street is really something. Um, and when people talk about so much like, oh, I would never consider living in a place, and then they claim that it's like that, no one ever mentions it about here, but it actually happened to me on the first day. So it's worth worth a mention, um, at least be aware that maybe that's a fluke incident and it just happened to happen to me on my first day and it will never happen again. It has never happened to anyone else. That happens too, but it seems unlikely. Anyway. That is our first impressions of Argentina and Buenos Aires. We are going to be exploring over the next two weeks, so it's very exciting. Uh, this is this is a really cool location. And for those who've never really checked the map, we're south of the southern tip of Africa. We're really far south right now, so pretty cool. All right, thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support what we do here. You can buy my lovely wife Dominica and I a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That helps us go to these cafes and come up with these amazing experiences that we can share with you guys. And uh, we'll see all of you tomorrow.